our opening, our opening hymn today is number 309, 309, All People That On Earth Do Dwell. All people that on earth do dwell, sing to the Lord with cheerful voice. Him serve with mirth, his praise forth tell. Come we before him and rejoice. Know that the Lord is God indeed. Without our aid he did us make. We are his folk, he does us feed. And for his sheep he does us take. O oh, enter then his gates with praise. One approach him, there is no unto. Praise Lord and bless his name always. For it is seemly so to do. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, each day you feed us with your body and with your blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty and merciful God, that we may in truth receive a share in the resurrection of Christ your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The crowd in Philippi joined in the attack on Paul and Silas, and the magistrates had them stripped and ordered them to be beaten with rods. After inflicting many blows on them, they threw them into prison and instructed the jailer to guard them securely. When he received these instructions, he put them in the innermost cell and secured their feet to a stake. About midnight, while Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God as the prisoners listened, there was suddenly such a severe earthquake that the foundations of the jail shook. All the doors flew open and the chains of all were pulled loose. When the jailer woke up, and saw the prison doors wide open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself, thinking that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted out in a loud voice, do not harm to yourself, we are all here. He asked for a light and rushed in and, trembling with fear, he fell down before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you and your household will be saved. So they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to everyone in his house. He took them in at that hour of the night and bathed their wounds. Then he and all his family were baptized at once. 
he brought them up into his house and provided a meal, and with his household rejoiced at having come to faith in God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Your right hand saves me, O Lord. Your right hand saves me, O Lord. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with all my heart, for you have heard the words of my mouth. In the presence of the angels, I will sing your praise. I will worship at your holy temple and give thanks to your name. Your right hand saves me, O Lord. Because of your kindness and your truth, you have made great above all things, your name and your promise. When I called, you answered me. You built up strength within me. Your right hand saves me, O Lord. Your right hand saves me. The Lord will complete what he has done for me. Your kindness, O Lord, endures forever. Forsake not the work of your hands. Your right hand saves me, O Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, Now I am going to the one who sent me. And not one of you asked me, Where are you going? But because I told you this, grief has filled your hearts. But I tell you the truth. It is better for you that I go. For if I do not go, the Advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convict the world in regard to sin and righteousness and condemnation. Sin, because they do not believe in me. Righteousness, because I am going to the Father, and you will no longer see me. Condemnation, because the ruler of this world has been deemed the gospel of the Lord. The uh, retired Anglican Bishop of Durham, N.T. Wright, uh, made a comment about this first reading from Acts of the Apostles I thought was interesting. We have this situation where Paul and Silas have been arrested, they've been mistreated, they've been thrown in prison uh, for proclaiming the, the word, and they're in the jail now. And God comes to vindicate them. And so the strange thing, the earthquake happens, the jail shakes, the chains fall, and everything happens in the middle of the night. And you have this jailer coming in, and he sees that, well, he assumes everybody's gone. And if we remember earlier in Acts, this probably means he's, he, he's going to be killed. When Peter is, is freed by the angel from jail, Herod kills the uh, guards that allowed him to escape. And so, again, this jailer knows that it's his life on the line. And so he's pulling his sword to, to kill himself, to fall on a sword. And again, Paul says, don't worry about it. We're here. We're still here. And then this line that the jailer speaks, sirs, what must I do to be saved? And that sounds like this classical question that we have as Christians. It's, it's echoed through Christian history. We've debated about Protestants and Catholics talk about this. What, what, what's necessary to be saved? And Wright mentions that, that this isn't, we should, 
this isn't a great translation because it seems to be bringing in um, later theological questions. So for this pagan jailer, he says, what, you, what, you what he was really meaning, if he was going to translate it in terms of what was on this, you know, this jailer's mind, was, sirs, so he probably said, gentlemen or sirs, how can I get out of this mess? How can I get out of this mess? And he says it honestly and seriously, but this idea, again, a pagan, there's no this sense of heaven or hell, or this idea of judgment, and things. even I've had that. There were all sorts of ideas about what the afterlife was like, none of them very specific. Again, it would have been all in kind of a mess, and that's not what he's talking about. What he's talking about is, my life is just, it's, it's a mess. I'm in the midst of this weird things happening, it's midnight, the jail's being shaken, the earthquakes are happening, you're here, it seems like some sort of miracle things are happening here, my life's in danger, you're, you've just changed everything, and my life's a mess. How, do, how can I get out of this mess? Um, so we begin, the, the whole idea of salvation, it's the same Greek word for to be healed, or to be solved, these sorts of things. And we read it now and thinking, oh, we're talking about heaven and hell. But he wouldn't, this fellow. And instead, he's thinking about the fallen world. He wouldn't, again, he wouldn't have even thought of that idea of fallen. But, but everybody experiences the messiness of the sinful world. And that can take place in terms of the violence we're part of, the greed we're part of, the lust we're part of, the suffering we're part of, um, just the mess that we are and that our lives are stuck in. Lord, how can, you know, how can I get out of this mess? Um, and so that, again, can, it's a question that can be asked in many different situations many, for many different reasons, not simply that sort of existential question of heaven or hell, but how can I get out of this? And the, the answer is simply, believe in the Lord Jesus. And so even that, that idea of belief, uh, the, the jailer would not at first say, what are you talking about? They really proclaim Jesus Christ is Lord. That's, that's the solution. That's how you get out of the mess. How I get out of the mess is I can proclaim in my life, Jesus is Lord. And then the mess shakes and shifts and, and moves all around to the point where there's order because Jesus is the Lord of life and the Lord of the world. And if we recognize that and acknowledge that, then our, order, our life becomes ordered in him. And so all of this suffering, all the sin, all the pride, all the arrogance, all the, again, lust, greed, whatever it is, violence, what all of that stuff is. Um, when, when Christ is Lord of my life and Lord of the world, then that stuff gets reordered. And we're out of the mess. Now, we might still physically be in the mess. Again, Herod might kill you, but it's no longer a mess within us. It's now ordered in Christ. So whatever, again, we as 21st century Catholic Christians, we know more than this jailer did in the, in the you know, moment. And so part of the, the ultimate question is, how do I achieve salvation that way? But the real question of Jesus as Lord of life, my life, that's, that's going to take place in all sorts of questions we bring to this church today. So in the mess that I am in, have I proclaimed Jesus as Lord? Because that's the, that's the way to get out of the mess. With trust in God's faithfulness, we place our, these prayers before him. For the church and her leaders, may the Holy Spirit continue to grant them courage in sharing the good news of Christ with the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For world leaders, may Christ, who unites all to him, help them lead with justice and mercy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who suffer in mind, body, or spirit, may the healing hand of Christ provide peace and consolation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our community of believers, may the joy of the gospel be a source of light and life in our daily endeavors. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for the Khomeini family for whom this Mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, may the mercy of God bring them everlasting life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And together we pray our parish prayer. Heavenly Father, please send your Holy Spirit upon our parish community to help each of us take our next step in following Jesus and to help us live and share the joy of the gospel with others. Lord, we thank you for listening to our prayers, which we offer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these Paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. By the oblation of his body, he brought the sacrifices of old to fulfillment in the reality of the cross. And by commending himself to you for our salvation, showed himself the priest, the altar, and the lamb of sacrifice. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. 
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, and Paul, our Bishop, Eusebio, and Frank, his auxiliary bishops, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you summon before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. 
as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Hear, O Lord, our prayers that this most holy exchange by which you have redeemed us and bring us your help in this present life may ensure for us eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Mighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. <laughs> For why the Lord our God is good, His mercy is forever sure, His truth at all times firmly stood, and shall from age to age endure. To Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, the God whom heaven and earth adore, from us and from the angel host, be praise and glory evermore.